Hey there, my name is Paul and this is Out of Neutral, a weekly tune-up where we look to the Bible to get in gear and follow Jesus into the life he came to make possible. Today I want to talk about why you won't change unless you get serious about hope. I think Christians misunderstand the scripture's teachings about hope. The tendency is to view verses about hope like the decorations of the Bible, pleasant thoughts that aren't very functional. It's not that the verses aren't popular, but I don't, I don't think we know what to do with them. So often, we just look at them the way we might look at a sculpture on our way to the office, a brief distraction before the work begins. I'm convinced that that attitude keeps us from growing in the Christian life the way that we might. In fact, getting serious about hope is one of the primary means God has given us to make progress in personal growth and maturity. Let me explain. When a person does something that the Bible calls sin, they do so because they hope it will bring them some benefit. When Adam and Eve ate the fruit in the garden, it wasn't just a random act of rebellion. They hoped that the fruit was good for food, it tells us. In other words, they hoped that it would taste good, but also that it would make one wise. They put their hope in what the serpent had promised and chose to ignore what God had warned. And we do the same thing every time we sin. Think about the false hope that motivates the ways that you sin. You tell yourself, this will make me happy. It's not that bad. I deserve this. This is what I need. And in doing so, you're lifting the break of your conscience and the protection of the Holy Spirit. You might still try hard to avoid it. You might pray for strength even. But it's almost impossible to stop doing something that you've convinced yourself you need and that you believe will help you. This is where the Bible's teachings on hope can help us. Did you ever wonder how Paul did it? He was beaten, shipwrecked, and imprisoned. He dealt with betrayals and opposition. Why didn't he just pack it in the way that others did? Why didn't he give in to sin and pull back on his devotion? Well, he tells us. In 2 Corinthians 4, 17 and 18, for example, he says, For this light momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison, as we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. It wasn't that he didn't feel the challenges and difficulties. It wasn't that a sinful response didn't occur to him. The difference was his hope. He thought deeply about all that God had promised him, and he learned to treasure those things. He consciously chose to put his trust in what is eternal and unseen. By comparison, he saw the things of this world as temporary and fading away. When he faced losses, and he had plenty of them, he kept comparing them to what he had to look forward to. A trial that would crush a person who had never learned to see past today was in Paul's mind what he calls a light momentary affliction that couldn't be compared with the eternal weight of glory. Have you learned to reflect on your hope like that? Have you compared what God has promised you with what the world tempts you with and by faith chosen to put your hope in God's promises? This is what makes the battle with sin and the struggle with trials slightly less difficult. Now, the Bible tells us that, that this is even how Jesus coped with all that he confronted. As he faced the most painful and humiliating death, Hebrews 12, 2 says that for the joy that was set before him, in, he endured the cross. Jesus didn't lean on his willpower as he agonized over the nails and the jeering of the crowds. He put his hope in the joy that awaited him after the resurrection and we're invited to follow his example. By hoping in God's promises, we find the strength to deal with life's difficulties. By choosing to find our hope in the life to come, we receive the grace to deal with the temptations in the here and now. Consider the invitations to biblical hope in these verses. 1 Peter 1.13 Therefore, Preparing your minds for action and being sober-minded, set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Psalm 33, 18. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him 
on those who hope in his steadfast love. Or Colossians 3, 1 and 2. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on, are on earth. Why not try using these verses of hope as fuel for the battle for your own personal growth? Use them to get your mind off of the cares and temptations of this world. Let them build kingdom values in you and heavenly defenses against the pressures to come as you consciously choose the hope that God has promised and choose to reject the false hope that this world would hold out to us. May God give you help as you do. That's all for this time. If today's video has helped you get out of neutral, leave a comment, share it with your friends, and subscribe to join us on the journey.